Right. Yeah, we're in progress. And uh, good to see everybody tonight. Uh, I've been looking forward to tonight. Uh, got Nicole and Jennifer with me and us. And what uh, they've just recently become a part of my Patreon group, Mobilize Legislators Initiative. And we talk about courtrooms of heaven and governing creation uh, as a co-creator and stuff like that. And they just recently got in there and I became friends with them on Facebook. And uh, I started seeing all the dreams they're having, you know, and it's just been incredible uh, every day, you know, several dreams. And I dream like that, too. And, and uh, uh, they're fast and furious. And sometimes it's a whole movie picture all night long and Maybe I'll jump back into it the next night and stuff like that and recurring dreams and all that stuff. But, but they all have significance. And I learned from a, a governing courtroom perspective that, that first of all, everything has significance. I don't even consider a nightmare, a, a, a really a nightmare. I consider it God is revealing something to me. He's revealing an assignment against me. So all things work together for the good. So I can take that into the courtrooms of heaven and begin to govern uh, and remove legal rights in a, in a judicial system of heaven. And I can get free from whatever was shown to me in the dream. And then on the other hand, the positive stuff is, is revealing my destiny. So I can take those things into the courtrooms of heaven and begin to go through the judicial process and remove every legal right that caused me to be limited for what I saw in the dream. And that's really why I'm doing what I'm doing today. And so it's powerful when we begin to think as the ecclesia, as the governmental uh, uh, legislative and judicial sons that are ruling and reigning over all creation and the restoration of all things, including things that are happening in me and uh, in my life. And so I'm excited tonight. I don't want to talk too long, but, but uh, you know, I just, just love you guys and honor you guys and respect you guys. And, and I love, I was telling Jennifer earlier that I just really have a heart for people that are kind of underground and in the hidden place in the secret place and, and uh, not out there in the big public ministry. I've been there with them and I've done all that and traveled, traveled, traveled and, and, uh, uh, now that he led me out is, is, is so much more, uh, in feeling life, you know, just abundant life and, and peace and joy and happiness that, that I'm out and be able to help people, uh, uh, cross over the Jordan into the next age <laughs> that we're, that we're entering to being a forerunner and gathering with a bunch of forerunners to, that we help us help each other out and the courtrooms of heaven uh patreon group uh mobilize the legislative initiative is the banner we're under there uh what the lord told me to do i want you to mobilize the legislators and so it's become a really a family oriented uh gathering where i'm not the speaker uh we share uh, it's a culture of honor, of love and respect. And, uh, just like a, well, it's probably not like a family, <laughs> not my, <laughs> my family, <laughs> but it should be a, a heavenly family. So we, uh, we, we don't have doctrinal debates. We, we all just accept what everybody's got to say. We don't argue or we're not critical and fault finding. We just share and everybody has an opportunity to share every Sunday night. So, uh, uh, I'll be recording this and I'll put the links in the recording. So I don't want to waste too much time and talk, but, but, uh, I invited Jennifer and Nicole in because of their dreaming. And I had a lady scheduled for about two or three months and she's just overwhelming, uh, uh, in her life and, and, and her ministry as well. And she's a legal person in the, uh, legal system in the natural so she ties all the dream stuff with governing and in the courts too. She's powerful. Her name is Amy Coelho and she is powerful, but I haven't been able to get back in touch with her. She's traveling and traveling and traveling and doing this and that. I'm going sit still for a minute, Amy, <laughs> we need to do another one of these. But anyway, I found you too, you know, and I'm just fascinated by your dreams that you have and, and how 
extremely prophetic they are for all of us. And, and I just want to honor you and give you freedom to go wherever you want to go. Talk about whatever you want to talk about as deep as you want to go. Uh, nobody's going to be critical and fault finding. Nobody's going to be uh, arguing. Uh, and so uh, I just want to say thank you for coming on tonight. It's really an honor for me to have you guys and share tonight. So uh, let's just dive in. How about that? Let's just go. And uh, whoever wants to go first can go first. Thank you, everybody else, for joining with us tonight. This is going to be fun. And we'll, uh, we'll be interactive here in a little while, but I'm going to give them a little time just to share what's on, on their heart for tonight. So it's all yours. All right. Jenny. Jenny. <laughs> well, Terry, thank you for having us in your living room tonight. I like these raw and real. They're kind of cool because it is. It's like a family getting together and just chatting. So it feels, it feels good. Um, we are not experts by any means. We're just dreamers. Like we just dream. And that's kind of our, the other part of our life. You know, some people think they live like two thirds of their life and then they sleep the other third. I think we like work all the way through <laughs> all 24 hours and we love dreaming. We love sharing. We love interpreting. We love hearing from the father. And that's just where we're coming from. And, um, as we became friends, you know, and we've connected with other people like Anne and Sandy, um, we're all dreamers. And it's just really cool to engage with the father and start hearing what it is he wants to say. And I love that you said even nightmares, you know, aren't bad because that's what they are. They're exposure. And they're, that's a good portion of dreams is exposure of what the enemy is doing against us. So, you know, we can take action where we need to take action. I'll let you, Nicole. Oh my gosh, I don't even know where to start. I think that um, what I think is really cool about dreams is that no, I don't think that people dream the same. Yahweh speaks to us in our dreams how, you know, in ways that we understand personally. Some people are, are sim symbolism people. They understand symbolism, right? I'm not. Like, if you put symbolism, if you always put symbolism in my dream, he knows I'm going to be, like, on my face seeking revelation because I have no clue. Like, I'm a literal person. And so he um, speaks to me very literally in my dreams because of that. And so, like, he'll just, um, you know, whether he... Uh, is exposing something or he has me doing something, helping someone, going somewhere. He'll speak pretty uh, literally to me and I'm just uh, grateful for that. Um, an another thing is um, unlocking dreams. Now, throughout my life, I would have prophetic dreams very sporadically. But then when I kind of, um, you know, fell away from Yahweh a bit, you know, um, you know, like six or seven years ago, and my dream stopped, I had a couple really significant ones that turned out to be true, like marrying my husband, um, and who he was. Um, but then after that, there was no like, um, uh, even, you know, even when I came back, and I turned towards him, embrace him, I had to repent for things in my bloodline. And then my dreams opened up, and he showed me what that was, he led me to someone that had a deliverance class in a ministry. Um, for me, in my situation, it was about ancestral slave ownership. When I when I repented for ancestral slave ownership and everything that comes along with that, my dreams unlocked immediately. And so that's one one thing, you know, um, now I would, you know, go to the courts about it. At that time, I didn't know about the courts. So Yahweh met me where I was at. And I just simply repented for whatever I was seeing and and they opened up. And so, um, you know, sometimes if your dreams get blocked, you can um, you can ask the Holy Spirit for revelation and, and go into the courts about that. Um, and everybody dreams. Some people think they don't dream, but everybody dreams. It's a matter of if we're receiving it or the gateway is blocked or whatever it is, but everybody dreams. And I've had people get frustrated with me. I don't dream. And I'm like, <laughs> but you do and you should, and you could if you want to. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Um, another thing that I've um, experienced is the higher that you go in your relationship with Yahweh, your dreams will shift and, and change to, to meet you there, you know? So, um, for example is in deliverance ministry, they, um, deliverance ministries, and there's even ministry specifically about the dreams about the enemy. They have this generalized 
kind of language of this is what this means in a dream. And this is what this means. And if you dream this, then it's this and that. And they focused a lot on, on um, what the enemy is doing and symbolism of the enemy in dreams, right? And I noticed when I was in that, I would still have these powerful dreams, but engaging with so much of this, well, what's this dream mean about the enemy and this and that? Um, it, my, I would see a lot of witches in my dream and they were doing witchcraft to me and stuff. And then, and then there came a point where I was like, you know what? I come out of agreement with this and the Holy spirit, you know, he revealed that to me because, you, um, I was just like, I come out of agreement with this. Like witches can't come in my dream. I forbid it. They're not coming in my dream unless Yahweh shows me a dream with witches in it himself. Personally, they're not coming in my dream. They're not attacking me. And I started to reject the things that he showed me. Um, that I was in agreement with that was allowing to enter into my dreams. And then when I did, it shifted and I was not getting demonically attacked in my dreams. And it was shifting to where now I'm moving and doing things with Yahweh. He's sending me places. We're going here and we're um, praying for this person or, or whatever it is um, that he had me do. One time he had me uh, record a tsunami as it happened in California. Um, I, I, I stood on a, I've never been to California, but in this dream, I was by the Coronado Bridge because I had to look up, this dream was last year, I had to look up the bridges, pictures of the bridges, um, so that I could see which bridge it was. It was the Coronado Bridge. And I was standing at this hotel. I found the hotel on Google. When I Googled the hotels by the beach, I found the one that's shaped like a square and has a, uh, like a courtyard going down the middle of it. Anyway, he, he always tells me in the dream, go, go out and turn on your Facebook live. I've never used Facebook live. So I go out and I stand on the balcony and I, and I hit the Facebook live and the tsunami starts coming up in the water and just comes down and just goes right by me. My window was open in my hotel room and the water didn't come in my hotel room, just a couple splashes. You know, I went over and shut it. So I've had tons of dreams that I don't even know what they mean. Um, another thing is like, I don't try to interpret what they mean. I uh, stay uh, neutral you know, observing from the nothingness like Ian uh, talks about, and I have my ideas of what things could mean or what it feels like. But if I don't know what it means, I won't try to interpret it and change it. I'll just, you know, okay, Yahweh, what is that? Sometimes, sometimes we wait, sometimes we hear something right away. I don't know. Um, so yeah, back to you, Jen. I'm so glad she's here because <laughs> I could never carry a whole Zoom meeting. <laughs> we can carry conversations for hours. We got this. Yeah. Um, yeah, my dreams opened up in like 2018, 2019, and I was so new to anything prophetic. I didn't know what was going on. The first dream I had was about Kanye West, and I'm like, I am not a fan. <laughs> I don't understand why I just dreamed about this guy. But I didn't dislike, it was just, I didn't understand what was going on. However, Holy Spirit helped me in, interpret like pretty quickly. And I still was so unfamiliar with dreaming or prophetic gifts. And I realized that there was something interactive going on. Like there had to be, because there's no way I was thinking about Kanye West in any way <laughs> or anything like that. And the dream was about helping him. He was in need of help. And I knew I had, a, you know, a a burden of intercession that was given to me through that dream to start praying for him. And it was not long after that, that his Sunday service stuff started. And so I knew that that was a progression of what he had been doing in his life and what he had been fighting through that he was moving forward. Yahweh was moving forward, but he needed intercessors, you know, to, to keep him strong in prayer. So that's kind of how I opened up. And one of the things that I thought were really interesting, I grew up kind of a skeptic. I was raised to be a skeptic. I wasn't raised in faith. I wasn't raised in church. Um, I had encounters. I didn't understand them. I didn't know what it was. And because I wasn't raised that way, they just kind of flew by the wayside by my teenage years. So coming back to that in adulthood um, and starting to dream and starting to have these dreams open up like vivid dreams. Um, I had to, I had to recognize them for what they were like, there's something substantial going on here. I don't know what it is, but I've got to figure it out. And just as I leaned into it with the Holy spirit, they started expanding and things started expanding. I started connecting with people, you know, prophetic groups, prophetic people, uh, it took me a couple of years to find Nicole, but we found, <laughs> I found her. Um, and so 
as I started learning from the people around me, you know, because I just love being a learner and started soaking up everything, I started learning how important dreams were in the Old Testament. And I didn't understand that dreaming was a way of life for them. It wasn't abnormal. Like for us now, you know, a lot of people think it's woo-woo or strange or part of that weird prophetic gifting. They'll assign it, you know, different <laughs> words like that. But in the Old Testament, it absolutely wasn't. When kings wanted wisdom, they would pray for dreams. When they wanted interpretation, they would call their seers. This is what they did. This is why Joseph was important. This is why Daniel was important. Um, and the Holy Spirit is our interpreter, you know, like Nicole saying, and like Ian teaches, sit with it, sit in the nothingness, because we can't, I, and I've learned that because I fell into the dream language for a while. Everything's got a language and a meaning. And Nicole just keeps pulling me back out of it. She's like, uh -uh -uh, don't do that. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and the longer you sit with Holy Spirit, like um, Joseph said in Genesis 48, doesn't the interpretation belong to the Lord? It really does. It really does. But that is an act of faith, you know, and we as humans tend to want the concrete and the literal and the and the book and the manual. So we've got to bind ourselves to the Holy Spirit and that faith that we have in him that he's going to bring the meaning. He will. We've just got to we've got to steward the dream. We've got to honor it. And one of the first people, whenever I started looking into dreams, I don't know much about Mark Berkler and his ministry, but I know his dream videos helped me. And um, he, the one thing that I took away from him so strongly was he said, if you want to dream, put a pad and a pen by your bedside table. He said, and ask the Lord to give you a dream. Just keep doing that. You'll get your dreams. And that stuck with me all these years. Like you've got to show him that you want this, you know, even if you're struggling or even if something's blocked, let him know you want it. The Bible in the um, New Testament, it says eagerly desire the gifts. You know, we're not chasing the gifts. We're chasing the giver. But we should eagerly desire all these gifts that he's got lined up for us. I mean, why leave them unwrapped, you know? Eagerly desire them. So dreams are pretty cool. And when they started, I just wanted to understand what was going on. I'm kind of an analytical person. So, you know, somebody show me something. <laughs> why did that just happen and that's what we text each other a lot why did this just happen last night <laughs> we have some funny stuff going on and we dream for each other too yeah i was gonna yeah. say well yahweh will answer our questions like we talk we're like best friends like sisters um mm -hmm. especially you know like me jen and Anne. like we all talk frequently all the time and mm -hmm. jen and i facetime for hours all the time and whenever you know well something will come up or whatever she'll dream the answer for me and vice versa <laughs> and sometimes i don't even know that was one of the yeah. coolest things that I had. I had a dream yep. and I told her I had this dream and I cannot figure it out, but it was a really rich guy. And I did not know what his name was. I don't know who he was, but he had a really big problem. And I was telling him, here's your solution. Here's your solution. And she's like, oh, that dream was for me. <laughs> for my son. Yeah. yeah. She dreamt exactly the scenario of what was going on with my oldest son. And when I, um, and I told, you know, I didn't tell her anything. She didn't know anything. And, and, and I went and I said, this was Jenny's dream. This is what she dreamed about you. These are the changes that Yahweh is saying he will help you make. And my son was like, okay. And he made the changes and his life just turned like completely around. Like he was struggling with being depressed and not wanting to work. And, you know, because of some choices he was making, but when she dreamt, he knew that it was Yahweh um, talking to him personally. And he um, made the changes instantly, came into agreement with Yahweh instantly. And his life has been the best it's ever been uh, since then. And he was so rich in that dream. I was like, I don't know why this guy has a problem. Like it's funny because I kept telling my son, you have everything. I was telling him, you have everything. You have everything. Yeah. You have a family that loves you. You're rich. Those were the words I was saying to him as I was trying to Nothing. reason with him before. And she didn't know anything about that. Nothing. Mm -mm. So wild. Yeah. So Just it's a, cool. It's cool. You know, when you can dream together and dream for each other and also talk about the dreams, you know, and pray together too, because dreams are meant to be acted upon you know at in certain times when it's not just revelation uh, like a status so yeah pray together healing that's awesome. in dreams that's awesome i've I, been I, I healed in my dreams like you, if you thing here uh you said something very important you said i 
we were talking about the statement we make, I don't dream. Well, as a co-creator, you have created your own reality by what you spoke because mm -hmm. how Yahweh created as he is. So am I in this world, 1 mm -hmm. John four seventeen. So we need to begin to change our language, not only put the book out and the, I actually, I hate waking up because I, I, I found a recorder. I just know where the record button is. So I can say a few words and I'll remember. So I'll use that because uh, I don't want to, if I wake up, I'm up for a couple hours, you know, so it's tough for me to go back to sleep. So I, I used to have a recorder that I would just hit the button and say a few words or whatever I needed to remember. And that was it. But, but I learned that whatever I declare and decree, I'm releasing the law out of Mount Zion from mm. me uh, is, is, is enforcing the lie, perpetuating the lie that I can't dream or I don't dream. So I need to change my language. I need to govern over uh, mm. my ability to dream and begin to declare. I dream seven, eight, nine dreams every night. <laughs> and I can remember them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes, that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so good. That's good. That's exactly it. What were you saying about healing, Nicole? Oh, I was going to say um, it to, to the extent that you believe and you, you know, as earlier we talked about coming into agreement about like negative dreams and demonic dreams, but when you come up higher and you agree with, I can go places in my dreams. I can like limitless, limitless. Yahweh can do whatever he wants in the dreams. Uh, healing will become a part of that. Not only for others, you'll be praying um, and, and healing will happen for people you don't even know, but for yourself. And I was, I know I've had a couple healings in dreams. Um, last night I was healed from childhood trauma in my dreams. And uh, last year, oh, last year, I, um, I have a crown in the back of my mouth. I paid a lot of money for this very, like $4,000 for one crown. And I, and I got it like 10 years ago, but when I went to the dentist to get my cleaning, he said, Oh, bacteria has gotten under that crown. We're going to have to pull it out. I said, what do you mean? And he, I said, pull out my whole tooth, everything. And he was like, yeah. And I said, so I'm not, there's not going to be anything there. I paid a lot of money for this thing. What do you mean? And he was like, nope, there's nothing we can do about it. He said, when it, when it starts to hurt too bad, then we're going to have to take it out. And so it, it, um, about a year or two later, so this was like last year, it started to hurt really, really bad. And I was so, I was like, y'all wait, no, like I have all these kids. I can't afford another 4,000. Like, what am I going to do? Like, help me please. And uh, I went to sleep and I was in heaven in the dentist chair. And um, I knew it was in heaven because heaven looks the same in my dreams. Like when I dropped me and Terry were in heaven, um, it, it's like, it's just kind of like, you know, just beautiful. And I was like, out in the open in a dentist chair and the, the lady in the chair said Jesus said that this tooth has to be saved at all costs mm -hmm. and I was like okay and they said let us go back and consult with him for a minute and they walked they walked it, it into like a little office door and left and they came back and they said yes he said you're healed I woke up with no more pain, it's the, the tooth is totally healed and so you know that's one testimony of healing and so if you come into agreement with he can heal you in dreams, he will heal you in dreams. Yep. It's all about agreement, right? Yeah, we got to get our minds set on the things above. So, you know, we'll agree for, for the things, for the gifts, for the adventures, the revelations. And if you want it, it's yours. Eagerly desire the gifts. He eagerly desires to give them to us. So I'm always encouraging people. Did you dream? And you know, when I pray for people, their dreams usually do open up at least for a night or two, you know, and if they want that to continue, that's something that they can just keep pressing in. So I think that's I've talked to cool. people about dreams and they've started dreaming like movies. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm so glad to be here and glad for anyone who um, will watch the replay because people mm -hmm. often come into contact with me directly and then they'll start dreaming so um, I'm really excited about that and, and before we came I could see myself holding the hands with all of you whoever was going to be here and us going up higher uh, together and so I was like okay I think people's dreams are going to really start popping off <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah adventures and dreams it's a thing 
you know uh, i've been like uh governing from the heart is something that jesus has been showing me about about you know like i like i said like i'm new here and i don't really you know like talk the way that in the you know like the judicial language or whatever but you know like jesus has been talking to me and showing me about governing from the heart about when your heart is in the right place with him you know when you've cleared the stuff out of your heart how much he can do through your heart you know and so dealing with heart issues really opens it up like a like a portal to allow um the limitless things in your dreams where he can just do whatever he wants or be helping whoever he wants to help going wherever he wants you to go you know doing things and we don't even always understand you know how governing from our heart even affects effects or what we're doing in our dreams you know but it's it's like our spirit is always doing things with him and so like that's another beautiful thing about dreaming and translocation that's something that you know we're looking at now as we study ian and we're here and that's just a cool thing that's been opening up nicole and portals and ann's done a few things that are have been interesting so you know, and then in that one dream she had with you, you were popping in and out of portals, Terry. Yeah. Uh-huh. And popped up in my house in her dream recently. She she lives in DC and she it was she just looked up and she was in my house in her dream. I was like, hey. <laughs> she was like, You weren't even like, how'd you get here? I think I said I might have <laughs> said like how'd you get here, but I wasn't surprised. It was like any of you could show up in my house and I'd know how you got there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so there's there's so much to be done if, you know, we want to move turn our hearts towards that, you know, move in that direction. There's so much to be done with dreaming. I had this like dream. Me, that, sounds like oh. to me that a lot of what you guys doing is just through joy and peace. I mean, it, it becomes a place of I'm not striving to have this thing happen. I'm just right. engaging it. And I'm in peace and rest and in, in him. And this stuff just happens as a byproduct of everything I'm doing inside of him. And, and yeah. so it's just part of the package deal we get. And it's like you guys are having so much fun with that. And a lot of <laughs> yeah. people with a religious mindset are just just overcomplicate things beyond mm. their their uh, whatever you know so it really is the way he's done with me over the years too it is i, I could, cannot orchestrate anything in the dream life in fact i've i've mentioned a lot of times that in this realm i operate out of my human nature in that realm i'm operating out of my divine nature i don't do warfare here but i'm i I can kick some devil butt in the, in the, in my yes. divine nature. I'm above, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm seated in Christ. I'm operating above the demonic hierarchy. So that's who I am in the dream. And one of these days, those two are going to combine on in this human divine being that I am, and I'll be able to fulfill 100% as he is. So am I in this world. And so it's like, it's, it's amazing that, that, that is happening. I also want to, uh, you're free to go wherever, wherever you want to but but uh, at what point did you see your dreams becoming more of an encounter a lot more recently a lot more recently I know Yahweh was trying to tell me in, in 2021 to come here to the courts of heaven, to your group. When I watched one of your videos and I dreamt about that, it was probably around that time, you know, um, it was kind of jumbled because my frequency was low. I was low vibe in, um, in deliverance ministry, you know, God bless it. Don't get me wrong, but it wasn't on my scroll for me, you know, so um i had moments of of doing things and helping people and stuff but it's really been taken off when when i came back to the first meeting here i think that was in the beginning of july or something 
And my dream immediately was in the third heaven with Terry cooking up fish. And I just started saying, Holy Spirit, activate, Holy Spirit, activate, activate. That's not even something that I say, <laughs> you know, I've seen that video before, but you know, like I used to joke about it when it first came out, I totally forgot about it. And then, you know, when I woke up, it was different. Like, like things were just different for me. Like it was like a, you know, like getting snatched out of a wrong timeline onto a right timeline when you come into alignment. Um, and so it's really lately, lately, they, it's been more like an encounters, more encounters. Yeah. I don't know about Jenny and Jenny's dream styles. Ooh. Hers is like, seriously, like movies. I always imagine her, her uh, dream movie sets being like uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, <laughs> Wizard of Oz, like some crazy <laughs> colorful, like when <laughs> <laughs> with rainbow hair <laughs> yeah last night um I didn't even realize what was going on in the dream and you know that's another interesting thing because we can wake up and have a dream and we can feel like what just happened but as we write it out it really helps Holy Spirit will start giving us revelation, you know, and that's like one of the first things we do. One time, Nicole just started texting me a dream and she said, I'm texting this to get revelation. She got done texting it. She goes, okay, got it. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, that's what happens to me too. That's when I realized that that's, that's another thing is that when you steward that dream and you're documenting it, you're, you're planning to look at it some more and pray into it. You know, that's when Holy Spirit says, here's what I need you to know about it. So I had one of those dreams last night and I'm sitting at this uh, like indoor kind of farmhousey type picnic table at a church where there's all kinds of social things going on. Like it's totally extraneous to me. And we're there and we're supposed to be talking about the Bible and they're talking about a Christmas tea social that they're doing for the ladies and all this stuff. And I'm like, let's just get down to business. The guy across from me had these massive blue eyes and he said, have you ever filmed from a helicopter? And I'm like, no, not really. But the person next to him I knew had, and I knew he wanted the attention and the credit for having done that. So I was going to try and give him that because I could feel him getting anxious and wanting attention. And I didn't get a chance to interject. He said, well, let me show you. He said, I want to show you what it looks like from a helicopter. And he took his thumbs and he put it on my eyes. And so I'm thinking, okay, this is really strange. But as I started typing it out and then I started talking to Nicole, I realized that was probably uh, an angelic thing, an angelic encounter. And that's what I started really feeling strongly about. And then Nicole came back and said, the person to his right that wanted the attention was somebody you know, from my former life. And she said, look at that. He's making a table for you in the presence of your enemies. And I said, wow, that is so cool so cool or nicole got a payout in a dream from a car insurance the other day oh, yeah. after a courts of heaven meeting i was so excited about that i was oh yes yeah oh i forgot to tell terry about that i don't want to bug so i don't like send all my dreams to people i don't want to bug <laughs> I don't feel like if i message you it's going to be bugging you but that was definitely a testimony for after one of our sunday meetings because i dreamt that i got this phone call and it was an insurance company and they said they were giving me the payout for it was like car insurance, but there was no car accident involved. It was just a payout that was coming. And Jen was like, see the, the I was going through something at the time where I was kind of, um, I was just going through something as I was trying to break off from somebody in my past and transition and, and they weren't very happy about it. So I was getting kind of spiritually attacked, you know, and, and, uh, she said the, the, the matter is settled like a legal matter. It's settled. And, you know, and I was like, oh, I felt that. And I was like, just uh, excited about the dreams that are uh, turning towards like the courts of heaven and legal stuff, you know? So like, yeah. those are the ones I'm looking forward to, but I'm still learning, you know? Yeah, we've both been having that. I had, a, I had one where they told me I was going to court on Monday and they needed my information and we were going to have the victory. Wow. Okay. Wow. I'll take, I'll take that. And then wow. one where I was told I needed to decide on an amount for settlement and Nicole was my supervisor and I had to decide what I was owed. <laughs> and, and I said, you were helping me negotiate. She goes, darn right. I was. <laughs> 
so we're getting a lot of um, legal and interaction. I mean, legal, it, until I started studying the courtrooms of heaven, legal wasn't really on my mind, you know? And so now we're getting the manifestation of that in our dreams. Yeah. That's, cool. oh, that's good. That's really good. Uh, I want to share uh, two dreams that I had. The one, the first one was, uh, you guys will get a kick out of this. Uh, <laughs> The first one was about eight years ago, where I was an associate pastor in Reno, and and it was my time to step out and start my ministry, and and I I had this dream where I was in a beautiful wedding dress, and 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 between uh, me and Jesus was the pastor of the church the head pastor and he was in the way and so you know back you know i was jumping through all the hoops and doing everything mm -hmm. they wanted me to do like what we were supposed to do according to that group uh and then lord said i want you to step down i want you to turn in your notice and and uh and uh just trust me from there that's all i knew to do so i, I gotta follow that first so I wanted another sign for it. I wanted another out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. Let everything be uh, confirmed. So I was, I was a, I was somebody important there. I was a pastor, you know. I was like, ooh, yeah, <laughs> had a lot of influence, you know, and and had the position, you know. That's what I've been working for. I didn't go to Reno for that, but that's what happened. And uh, and I said, God, I just got to have confirmation. And we were having a staff meeting one day and I was driving uh, down the interstate into, into the church and I passed this car and, and on the tag of the car, it says new era two, the number two. And I go, okay, I got it. <laughs> I turned it in my notice yep. today. That was all I needed. Just a little extra yep. incentive to turn my notice. And I was like, uh, who would ever put that on a license plate in, in the beginning? It's like God just had that for me to be bold enough to do that. That started a seven year uh, journey in the wilderness, come away with me time to to really get to know him, get away from everything familiar. And just two nights ago, I had another dream in another wedding dress. And I looked at it like, did I waste all that time or, or was I just being prepared? I saw the destiny in the first dream and am I now prepared for the, for the actual marriage with Yeshua and now, and I think, yeah, but the, the funny thing about it was, it was just a little flash dream, uh, was the dress was too long. I'm going, how do they walk in these dresses? I'll trip over, <laughs> I'll step on it. I'll boom. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, and that was the only thing weird about it, but it was a beautiful wedding dress and my hair was perfect, you know, and I, did, well, you know, I didn't have to do anything with the hair because it was already perfect. But it, it, was, it was just fun. And I thought, wow, that's just so cool. I got it. Eight years later, he comes back and shows me you're, you're in the right place, you know, and, and I felt like that's a lot of encouragement because if you're out in the, uh, unknown for eight years you <laughs> you wonder what's happening and it's all about all the dreams i had was about and encounters i had was about uh letting go of everything familiar and you know uh the story will go on and on and on but i i every major move i've ever made was because of a dream every one of them that's so cool yeah i believe it i wanted to tell terry um last week at the at our meeting you talked about how um how you had a dream one time when you were about the prisons you know how you were like always escaping the prison or whatnot and one time you came and grabbed a woman by the arm and and pulled her up and I was like oh I I tied that back to um the second dream I had of you when you were jumping in and out of the portals um at the end i dreamt that i was a prisoner in a prison and i was getting released and um and i put that on the dream i didn't know if you had seen that or read that or whatever and i was like i, I never really dreamt about prison before so i you know i was like what is this and so anyway so i'm sitting there i'm about to get released and the whole uh cell and bathroom is immaculately clean and shining they opened up the gate and they they said okay 
um, people came, other prisoners came to give me their laundry to wash. And then I heard it said, Terry is helping with your healing. Wow. So. Wow. That, that dream was years ago. And that's why I started Enoch Flight School and all the stuff I do in that arena. But that was years ago. I was just like thinking while you're telling that, it's like, if it was true, that dream was about you. That happened for me years ago. It's like, yeah. so it's like probably four or five years ago. And the manifestation came uh, through that. Uh, yeah. Through I told Jen, I was like, that girl in that dream was me. I know it. Like, I uh, feel that that girl in that dream, that's Terry. I said, because I, it, that, that's what I, that's, it just fits. It just fits. And Jen was like, Jen seems to think I'm like way more advanced than I really am. You know? So she's like, oh, I don't know. Like you're already, you're already out. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> she loves me, you know? <laughs> Yeah. I was going up the mountain and I thought she was coming up behind me. I told Terry about that dream and we get up there and she's like already there. And at the top of the bleachers, I'm like, of course she is <laughs> with her rainbow hair. Of course she is. <laughs> well, the dream and, team is, yeah. we are the dream team. All of Absolutely. Us. Real. Yeah. We're all on the dream team here yeah i'm saying it now everybody's dreams yes. are popping off yes yeah one of the early early um prophetic dreams when i started dreaming after the kanye west was the donald trump dream and you know i don't know whoever feels however about trump but i was on his team on that dream and we landed in a helicopter at the top of a building and then we had to go down into a venue where he was going to be on a stage we the team were kind of like you know secret service or a three-letter agency we walked with him onto the stage but we had to veer off to the right and we had to go on a little mini stage that was still facing the crowd the crowd was massive still facing the crowd to watch and to keep tabs you know and pay attention um but he was presenting and the crowd was just going wild and what really struck me about that dream and i thought it was so cool because because i could just feel the importance of it he looked over his shoulder I, as we were all walking away, veering away. He looked over his shoulder at me and he smiled. And I could feel the weight of everything that was on his shoulders. I could feel the absolute heaviness that was there. But I felt the absolute peace that he carried and the joy. That's the part that struck me the most. The joy with which he carried this task that he was doing, it was so evident right there. And that like solidified that I felt, you know, he was absolutely doing what he had been called to do. What was on, I guess now his scroll as I'm learning. And that was one of my, my favorite early dreams was seeing that and knowing that we were on his team, probably as intercessors and, and praying. That's awesome. I don't think we can just stop and say, Oh, that was just a dream. You know, if we're co-creators, he can use us whenever he wants to, to do mm -hmm. things like that. And, Mm -hmm. And what an honor it is for him to choose you to, to be on his intercessory team and no, to help him. And, and, you know, I've had several situations and dreams like that and, and uh, visions as well that, that uh, it's like, God is so awesome and amazing and loves his creation, loves us so much that he would, he would want us included in everything he does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's always working for the good. Yeah. Always. always. I mean, there's nothing we can do that, you know, can surprise him. He's always going to redirect us. You know, he, he knows how to recalculate and get us back into that timeline, like Nicole was talking about. Mm -hmm. so, so I had one two nights ago that I'm asking him about. And, um, and it was, you know, I, the father sent me undercover into a late night meeting in DC where Biden was doing a satanic ritual, a demonic hand appeared and, uh, and they were standing in a circle. And I said, Oh, I'm Nicole Malad. I'm the head of the U S forest service. What? <laughs> when I went in and I was like the whole time I'm like y'all are they gonna know what's me are they gonna know who I am <laughs> and I went to the back of the room and he they were all standing in a circle and a cigar appeared in the middle of the circle with an invisible hand and put it up to Biden's mouth he looked different in his face when he smoked the cigar 
his face changed. And then I saw, you know, I saw some things about, you know, people dying and stuff that was related to him. I could see a flash. I could see the vision in, in the dream. And I started to say, oh, Yahweh, I don't feel comfortable here. I don't want to be here anymore. Um, they're, Cause they're starting to say, no, what's your name again? Who are you? And, um, and so I, when I ran out, I had a long khaki trench coat on and I stomped on my phone and stepped out into the streets of DC. And then suddenly I was in New Mexico with the same trench coat on going into Ian Clayton's school of New Mexico, it was called. Well, when I woke up and posted that dream and then I saw that Biden came to New Mexico that day, the, the next day after I woke up. And so I'm like, okay, well, so I looked a little bit into what he was doing, he's trying to give uh, what was it? What's he doing? Reparations the to people in 1943 or something oh, weird. Yeah, yeah. But I, I was like asking Yahweh, okay, yeah. you know, like, is this like a legal thing? Like, is this about governing my area? Like, what is this with the dream? And then he's in my state when I wake up, you know, visiting, visiting. So, <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. That's why I'm here to learn. Like, because to me, that felt like kind of like a, like a territory thing. I don't know yeah probably. what would you think terry i'm just curious yeah well probably was i mean he trusts the show reveal that to you so there's a purpose behind it not just oh look at this you know there's <laughs> it's usually a tied to an assignment or a mandate to govern yeah. over that particular issue or to step into the courts and do whatever uh you're led to do but uh yeah yeah i totally agree with that that's probably a, uh something he's given you uh to uh to uh, uh, be responsible in that area for at least cool. a territory. Yeah, good. I'll ask him about that. Thanks. That's exciting. Yeah, that was a cool one. And imagine he shows up in New Mexico that day. Right. Right on time. Yeah. Well, I want to ask you another question. What about uh, let's let's go into the visions for a moment. And one thing I I I. Uh, I tried to get, uh, I encourage the members on the Patreon group to, to do is uh, to pay attention to our, our visions as well as encounters too. And so what I've been experiencing uh, quite a bit was uh, Paul said, uh, I'll be with you in spirit. Was that just a nice saying, like we use it? Uh, and when we say, I can't be there, but I'll be with you in spirit. No, Paul knew how to be there in spirit. He knew how to trans relocate in the spirit and probably spirit, soul, and body uh, all at the same time when you can't be, uh, uh, well, by locating, he's here and he's there. And so uh, I begin to practice that by faith. And every time I've done that, uh, it's usually for somebody that needs healing. I can go into this. I just shut my eyes and I'm traveling there at the speed of thought. And I'm just there in the ICU room or whatever. And, and I'm seeing, and I can describe all the, the room and who's there, the atmosphere of the room, the, the mindsets mm -hmm. of the people, the sadness and the, the, uh, despair and, you know, hopelessness, uh, been in the ICU several times. And, Every time I've prayed, I've seen this blue light come in and, and totally heal the person. And then they're healed in the natural. Wow. And, and oh, so it's, so it's important. Yeah. I think we, uh, our spiritual senses are exercised by reason to use. So mm -hmm. I think we can apply that to dreams and we can apply that to visions and we can apply that to uh, trans relocation, bilocations and traveling in and out gates of the heavenly realms and portals and all that the more we well the traditional church is used to waiting contending and tearing and pressing in right mm -hmm. and if we just step in we'll accelerate the manifestation and we'll begin to practice that and the more we do it the more efficient we get at it and now uh what i used to do is when i had one of those visions and when i went by faith i would call the person that asked for prayer or whatever and say i would describe the room to him yeah that's what it looks like and uh those were the people that were there yeah <laughs> and i'm going i'm blown away i mean uh, uh you know how can that happen if i was just seeing a vision well it can but but i was there in the spirit and i saw this blue light and they get healed every time uh sometimes a little different but visions to me um uh, uh, are very powerful just the same 
Uh, they're just in the daytime when I'm awake. But I purposely, uh, the, with the intent of my heart, I focus on whatever the need, I feel like the need Yahweh is, is leading me to. I only do what I see my father do. And if he mm -hmm. permits me to go there in the spirit, I just don't go because that's what I want to do. Uh, I go because he directs me to, like Nicole mm -hmm. and, the, and the Joe Biden thing there. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I have to be a, a obedient to to my master, to the king, you know, and, mm -hmm. and only do what he, I see him do. But, but that's been powerful to me and, and visions. If I have a dream, have you ever had those dreams where they don't finish and you wake up and you go, ah, <laughs> <laughs> I know you probably have because I've had them all the time. So I'm, I'm going to go back into that dream and a vision by faith. I'm just going to close my eyes. A lot of times I don't have to close my eyes, but it's just a statement. I'm going into the spirit mm -hmm. and and Yahweh finishes the dream he gave me. I said, oh, oh thank you. You're so good. You're so good. Mm -hmm. he, he wants to. I was going to tell you, um, I was going to send you a message yesterday and ask you what the blue light meant. I, I'm, and I haven't heard him say this until now. But yesterday when I was, I was thinking about the dream that I had about Joe Biden in the circle. And then I was thinking about today. And I was just kind of asking Yahweh, like, what kind of stuff are we going to talk about? And I was just, you know, I suddenly what I saw was I saw everyone, you know, that's here in the meeting. We were standing in a godly circle holding hands. And it was a big blue light that was growing up in the middle. And I was like, what is this blue light? What is this blue flame? What does this mean? So I, I I was going to ask you, Terry, what do you think the blue means? But again, I always feel like I don't want to bother him. <laughs> I, I just think it's Holy Spirit. God is light. And so Holy Spirit is light too, you know, so blue light. Uh, I just feel like it's Holy Spirit coming in into the Isn't earth. the blue flame the hottest flame? Yeah. Yeah. That's my understanding. Maybe that's, you know, some good fire uh, there. Osad says, what does it mean when you see a fictional character in a dream? I don't know. I get, I, I don't know the context of it, I guess. Yeah. What, what the, what's the context of it? Right. I look at it. First. It was the dragon lady from, it was the queen of the dragons from Game of Thrones. I don't even watch that show, but that's who was in my dream. <laughs> the queen of the dragons. Is that Daenerys? The lady with the white hair. I had to even look her up. Hair. I didn't think anything about her. Yeah. Yeah. She destroyed everything at the end. She rode on the dragon and burned down everything at the end. That's all I know. <laughs> That's cool. I didn't really watch it. I just saw the end, the very end of the last. Yeah. And every time, like, the disappointment was real that this was the ending. <laughs> yeah. If that thing is is God revealing something in you, there may be an ancestral generational bloodline issue. First and foremost, I always look at dreams, whether there's a person in it or not, what, what is the characteristic or the or something about that person that's in me? And mm -hmm. I may not get the immediate uh, uh, interpretation, but Yahweh has the meaning. And if it's something in the generational bloodline all the way back to Adam, we, we, we don't have head knowledge of that. So that's why we have to engage with the, uh, uh, the spirit of God to begin to understand how that has a legal tie in you. That's where I go first. And then you can go, uh, that's what we ask. Is this a literal dream or is this a dream that's concerning me? Uh, I need, I need revelation on that rather than just assuming from my own mental thoughts, what this is all about. I need to ask him inquire of the Lord uh, what I looked up on her, she was abused and raped and became a warrior at the end. But the and he, what I heard the Holy Spirit say was a reflection of fighting yourself or something like that. But it bothered me because dragon in the Bible is not good. And that was her title, even though she was fighting for people. Well, she was respected and fighting for people up until the end. She turned evil and turned against everything at the very end. She burned everything down. At the, at, it was like uh, no one thought that that was going to happen, that that's what she was going to do. That's what I remember about it. She was respected and loved. And then she did this crazy thing at the end, like when she had this power and she could. Yeah, well, that's a good okay. point, too, because, you know, when we think of dragons, we think of something evil. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the what a seraphim looks like, they look like a fiery dragon. 
Wow. So we can't base our interpretation on the dream of a book or what we think. It has to come from the Father. So yeah. when you release all your thoughts about it, uh, not saying they're wrong, but let him give the interpretation because he's the interpreter of dreams. Instead of trying to figure it out, you may never get there. You may ask several different prophetic ministers. Now I'll give you something out of the dream uh, book uh, that doesn't apply. <laughs> like how, how, how in the world, how many dream books out there says seven fat cows and seven lean cows mean seven years of famine, seven years of, <laughs> of, of abundance? That's not in there that I know of. I've never seen it in a dream book. So you have to go to the father with the dream interpretation first and foremost to inquire of him to find what's the truth here what do i need to know what's what's going on in my generational bloodline iniquities where how does this person how is this a, a part of my life and so he didn't show you just to show you something he showed you probably to get free from something if it's about you if it's not, it could be an encounter where you've given some kind of authority or mandate over a specific uh, legislative and judicial area. If you're not operating in those areas currently, you probably don't have authority to operate there. So we can't go there just assuming that, but that can be some kind of confirmation that, well, maybe he's given me some authority in that area. But I was fighting her. Go ahead. Um, I was I was driving towards her and my car became a white horse and then I started fighting her and then I tried to escape and there was another black horse with wings that met me and then I woke up. Uh -huh. But he said I escaped, wow. but I don't remember that part. Yeah, I would go back and ask him just for more revelation what that really truly means and uh, uh, wow. don't rest. Yeah, it's pretty powerful. It's a cool. That's powerful, yeah. But you don't want to miss it. <laughs> you don't want to misinterpret it. Right. Uh, according to your own thoughts, you want to know what it is, the truth, and the truth will set you free. Amen. Like Ian says, sit in it, sit, sit, sit in, in nothingness. Like yeah, he said, yeah. yeah. Darkness That's is hard for me. Gateway. I love what he said. Darkness is the gateway to the mysteries of God. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have any understanding, just sit in it, like Jennifer is saying, and just wait on the Lord to begin to show you. Here's what I'm after, Lord, but. I'm just going to sit here until you begin to speak to me. That's how I pray all the time. I really you mean close your eyes or just sit in the dark? Like, what do you mean sit in? No, just, just sit in. Him. You're, you're not really in the dark. You're just in that place of waiting. Okay. Uh, you're in that place with him, in him more than anything, mm -hmm. and allowing him to begin to, it, it's not physical darkness, although it, you can if that's what he leads you to do. It's all about everything we do is based on our relationship with the Lord. So sitting in him, resting in peace, uh, uh, will will get the revelation. Darkness means I'm not seeing anything yet, but I'm going to sit here until you begin to show me something. I'm going to wait. You. Does that sound good to you, Jennifer, Nicole? Is that what you guys do? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. What we're leaning into now for sure. <laughs> I'll just carry it oh i'll be like carrying it in my spirit you know like it'll just be there sometimes i'll just like like it's like it's there and i know that it's there and it might take a couple days it might whatever i just we just carry it until he starts to speak about it mm -hmm. i had a dream earlier this year that i walked into costco and i was looking for food and couldn't find anybody at the food counter so i'm at a food place and there's no food and finally, I encounter an employee that would help me because they were all otherwise engaged, not interested in being of any service. And as we're walking to go find the food counter, she stops and says, you know who you look like? That girl from Matrix. And I'm like, the girl from Matrix? I don't look like her. <laughs> so I start pulling up on my phone and I'm looking for, I know it's Carrie Ann Moss. And I'm looking on my phone to look at a picture like, do I look like this girl or what? And then she stops at like a trifold display and she's pressing buttons. She's trying to pull up on this electronic display, a picture. Neither one of us could pull up a physical picture of her. And the interpretation was not in the physical, in the spiritual. That's crazy. I told you you were like her before. Remember? 
<laughs> I was like Trinity. Her name was Trinity. Do I look? I I don't the understand. Way she I moves like slow and like in the, moving slow and fast, doing ninja stuff in the spirit. It's like that's you. So I had to go watch. That? I vaguely remember that. Yeah. I vague, you know, and it's it's hard to to fathom that you know those things about us until no, you not. you're awesome what are you talking about <laughs> you're awesome it is it's hot you know it takes a while sometimes for us to bypass our mind and all the conditioning we've had over the years and you know some traumas too um and to really step into like how he sees us and she's like you look like that girl from matrix i said what i had to go watch matrix again <laughs> you guys i gotta go see this what is that but yeah, he'll tell us things like that. And a white horse and a black horse and you were slaying some stuff. I mean, that that sounds pretty cool. Let him show you what he wants wants you to see from that. You said something earlier uh, about staying neutral. And I think that's what uh, 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 the dark places is about is not conforming anything to the way you think or the outcome you want or uh, but it's just staying neutral and allowing him to to give you the revelation or to take you where he wants to take you or dream what he wants you to dream and not not uh, enforcing any I wants or me, me, me. It's just a, a relational based uh, process to me. It's not our nature, though. You know, we tend to be impatient or we want the concrete. So it's for me anyway and i know a lot of people like me we we want the solid i want the tangible please give me the tangible and you know when the lord told me last year that you're in holy spirit school and then he gave me a dream where i was running after somebody addressed in all white they look like uh the girl from hunger games but it was all white and so that was me chasing the holy spirit and i was going through these valleys and these mountains until turned left into a cave this decorative cave and i said lord i don't know how i'm gonna learn anything in holy spirit school am i gonna hear you am i gonna get anything <laughs> can i even do this and as i just kept going like gosh i felt so helpless i really did like i can't do this and he showed me it's not you it's me anyway and i'm gonna show you how to do it it's where we have to trust that's cool. I never heard that one. Holy, that's yeah. awesome. Holy yeah. school. I was chasing it, man. Never caught him, but I was chasing him. <laughs> so he's going to take us through. And, you know, it's a matter of pressing in. It's a matter of just sitting in it and trusting that he's, he's going to show you what he wants you to know. And then you have awesome people around you, like, Terry's mentor group and besties like Nicole and you know people that can speak into your life and that one little word and you're like oh yeah sometimes yeah oh so we meet on Sundays here every Sunday okay I'll send you the uh, website if you want to join up for it yeah sign up for it okay thank you yeah we have a great time kind of like we're having tonight just just yeah. free and family stuff everybody shares it's just fun and and easy and light and nothing's complicated we try my whole deal is it's got to be simple you know courtrooms of heaven was way too hard for me and i i laid it down and i said god you got to make it simple for me so that's the way i teach and and uh, just just it, it's got to be for everybody and i keep it simple just because that's how I'm wired, I think, you know, so that's what we do on, on Sunday night. And, and it's on my Facebook group too. the connections there to the group or there on my Facebook page. And, and uh, so yeah, I'd love to have you join up with us. Sandy is there. Anne is Pamela. Mm -hmm. Diana is and Nicole, mm -hmm. Jennifer and me. So it's awesome. John, Hector, a few yeah. others. <laughs> yeah, we got a bunch of superstars there. And it's like, I love to see uh, uh, people. I don't. I don't like to say my my subscribers. I mean, we're just friends, you know. We we are family. We come together and we have a great time. And it's not preachy, preachy, preachy. And although I have a little message a lot, but but everybody shares and has a good time. 
and then we have some encounters we do uh, ascensions if that's what you want to call it we govern a lot over over things and people's lives whatever the lord leads us to we try to just uh, be like Yeshua. I only do what I see my father do and only say what I hear my father say. So we're uh, totally flowing in the spirit. Rarely there is a lot of things planned out. <laughs> and uh, so uh, that's how we roll. It's good to love it. You'll love it. That sounds awesome. I do need clarity on several things. So that'll be good. He told me to to travel in spirit. And I'm like, what do you mean? He said, command. And I said, I don't understand. So it'd be nice to get more clarity on on things. Yeah, yeah. And I got my YouTube channel too, uh, just under my name, Terry Spencer. If you want to go, it's all a lot of, I think there's probably over 300 videos on there now that that's uh, the three major ministries is Enoch Flight School, which is a weird, wild, crazy, supernatural stuff. And then the uh, Yahweh's co-creators and then uh, the courtrooms of heaven. It's so all of them are uh, uh, converged into that one Sunday night meeting that we have every week. So that sounds cool. Yeah, yeah. It, it's uh, a lot of good people. One, uh, one couple, their ex southern baptist preachers coming out of the church and they're just wonderful people got some people there john george and and a lot of different people that have been in big time ministry and now he's a a gardener for the lord and <laughs> tremendous <laughs> tremendous uh, uh uh anointing there and his farm is beautiful and you know, just people like that are just very unique and i just call them superheroes super uh you know they're super people, and uh, it's good to have you. Thank you. I want to uncover who you really are. Here's yeah. my, my favorite scripture. I'll show you. It's written on my Bible. It says, as he is, so are we. It's 1 John 4, 17. As he is, so are we in this world. And John. But I make it personal and say, as he is, so am I in this world. That's a present tense statement where Jesus said, as he is, so are you in the world. Now, who's doing it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All we have to do is step into it. And guess what? We begin to, we begin to dream. We begin to have visions. We begin to have encounters because you're, you're in that supernatural realm 24-7, 365. And you're sharing in his omnipresence. That's why you can translocate and bilocate and do all that stuff. You're sharing in his omnipotence. Powerful. Whew. That's why you only want to do what you see your father do. And you're sharing in his omniscience, all-knowing. So you have the ability to know everything that you need to know in any given particular situation, dream, interpretation, whatever, instead of going to a book on the earth or a model prayer or, or anything, you have the ability because that scripture is a present tense statement right now. Right. And so we enter into that by faith and then we govern over that. I'm always declaring and decreeing. I'm speaking to those things that are not as though they were. So I'm going, as he is, so am I in this world all the time. Jesus was the firstborn of many. <laughs> I am right in there with Yeshua. I am, I am right there. Ye are gods. John 10 and Psalms 82. Ye are gods. That was not a rebuke. It was God saying who you truly and uh, uh, really are. As he is, so am I in this world. It's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, there's no limitation. I can dream with the best of them. If I need to prophesy, I can prophesy with the best of them. If I can uh, ascend, I can ascend with the best of them because in him, I live and move and have my being because yeah. we're one, right? <laughs> so it's like, uh, that's, my, that's my mission is like encourage people to, 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 to abide there. Let it be a holy habitation. 
And then everything springs out of that. The dreams we're talking about, the vision we're talking about, everything we're talking about comes out of relationship with him. And we think we know him. I'm, gonna, I'm the first one to say this. I do not really know God. I don't know him, but I want to. And the more I do, the more I'll have the answers for here on earth as I govern over these situations because I see what's on the blueprint up there. I see and hear seated in him above that demonic hierarchy. I don't engage in warfare. I engage in governing over everything he shows me uh, uh, from that uh, uh, governmental seat. And if I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming with him. If I'm having a vision now, I'm having a vision with him. It's not, I'm separate. I'm, I'm one. We're in this divine mystical union with him in everything we do in dreams and visions, encounters, <laughs> reading, reading a children's book, coloring in a coloring book. I'm one with him eating sushi down at the restaurant. I'm one with him <laughs> like fishing on the beach, man. I'm one with him. <laughs> I can do all things in Christ. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in, a, yeah, in. In, yeah. That's something that we're learning about is to be in, like capital I N Christ. Yeah, that's a good study. Look up in Christ, the, that phrase. And it's a wonderful, wonderful study. You'll see, oh my gosh, this is where I need to govern. I need to go to the courts and litigate over every, every process every situation where i've been outside of him according to self-will and my limited perceptions yeah maybe about dreaming it's like ooh, god had a dream for you he knew you before the foundation of the world he was dreaming about you you have a specific purpose you have a specific destiny to fill that's a part of your blueprint part of your scrolls so just come on up here and uh, be with him and he reveal it to you. You may get to sit down in the library of heaven and actually read it out, but uh, probably a lot of you are, are uh, like Jennifer and Nicole, they're living their, their blueprint. They're living out their scrolls through dreams and also in the natural. You know, so it's really, really, really fun and it's full of joy and peace and happiness and when you get rid of all the religious junk out of your life, <laughs> you'll come to the place where this doesn't matter anymore. I've let it all go. And all of a sudden now I step into this wonderful world of uh, uh, the most incredible movie pictures. That's reality. That's real life. And you're going places and doing things you never dreamed possible. And so Jen and I were talking about uh, the, the absurd surges of freedom since we've stepped out of even deliverance ministry it has its own group think it has its own like you know there's there's some things uh belief so you can't like how we talked about the starbucks if you go to starbucks you'll get a demon you know where it kind of starts to mold your thinking in a way that's that takes away freedom and we were just talking about like since we've you know turned from there and just turned towards yahweh completely how free we feel it's like um, yeah. so much freedom. Oh, I can just be myself now. I don't have to worry about being judged by what t-shirt I'm going to wear that I'm with the devil or what words I say or how I phrase something, you know, just, just, I'm like, okay, I'm going to, I took a, all that time off of Facebook. And then I came back. I just turned it on recently um, after switching uh, directions towards Yahweh completely. And um, I just, oh, I'm free to be myself now. And I don't have to worry about anything, but just freedom it's yeah mm -hmm. you don't sometimes realize how um something is like prison or slavery or you know like how stripped down you are and um far away kind of from Yahweh but until you just surrender everything and turn towards him and just embrace his nature then you're just free wow. then your dreams will change too you have to really let go of, of everything in your mind and just be Amen. So anybody else have anything like to share? We've got a yeah, little question. One more. I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I had to look at one time and I 
think it was an angel. I don't know if it was me or not, but she, I, I didn't, now that you say scroll, I know it because I was calling it like a weird a old school paper looking thing, but now I know it's a scroll. And she pointed to it and she got upset and then she stumped away and I said, I'm sorry, I don't, I didn't. <laughs> and when I asked, when I asked, um, when I asked Abba about it, I, it's not very clear. That she was pointing to your scroll? Was I'm sorry, angel what? It was an angel pointing to your scroll? Yeah, she held it like this and was like, and then got upset and stumped away. And I'm like, I don't know what. I, I heard consecrate and I didn't, like at that time I heard consecrate. And I didn't understand. I still understand it, but it's not clear, you know? I think it will be if you ask him. What did it say on there? What did it say? What what did what did my scroll say? What were you trying to say to me, Father? Consecrate, okay. consecrate. How? Show me, Father. I need to know. I want to know what's on that scroll from you. I need to know. He said, "I want you to paint." That's what I heard. <laughs> awesome. That's what I heard. Well, thank awesome. you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Annie asked a good question about going it back into dreams and um, some things that. We uh-oh. You just lose her? We'll wait for her to come back on. What do you think, Jennifer, going back into dreams? Going back into dreams? Um, how we go back into dreams? You know, I've done that once specifically, successfully, where I said, okay, I wasn't done there. <laughs> I'm going to go back into that. And I just purposed and, and, you know, looked at the dream as I was drifting back off and I made that my focus. And then whenever I went back to sleep, I was able to go back and finish. And that's how I do it. I know there's some people that sit, you know, in an awake state and they envision going back into it. Yeah, that's the way I do it. Mm -hmm. But if he wants the message to come across, he'll get it across to you somehow, somewhere. Like me and, and the wedding dress, that was that was eight years apart, seven, eight years a, apart. It's like, and so I'm always expecting him to reveal more or give me a progression from that dream to this. Mm -hmm. dream. And my whole mm -hmm. dream life has been a progression. That's uh, a good mindset. Yeah. And instead of just one individual dream, it's a progression throughout your whole life to bring you to fullness, uh, the full stature of Christ, or as he is, so am I in this world. That's, that's his purpose, to bring you to that point of fullness. So everything is progressive. Mm -hmm. Everything you experience in life is progressive, not just your dreams and vision. Yeah. Everything has purpose. All connected, yeah. All connected. Even the bad stuff. All things work together for the good right we want to look at things as demonic or evil but to me if something like a nightmare god is revealing an assignment against me so praise god i had a nightmare mm -hmm. because he's revealing something to me that i didn't know some mm -hmm. legal right that the end this is courtroom language that some legal right that this entity has against me that i can eliminate and uh, get a judgment from the Lord to overrule this legal right that he has against me. So I praise God when I have a, 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 a negative dream or a nightmare, because all things work together for the good. If you just label it demonic, that will stay in the demonic realm and you'll never get anything done through warfare because it's tied to a legal right. And, and that's, that helps those fiery darts helps us with the fiery darts, not prospering. Right. Right. You can't deal with the legal right on the battlefield. It has to be done in the judicial system, the court system of heaven, in a mm -hmm. governmental, legislative, and judicial process. Yeah, amen. So, Nicole, what were you saying about going back into dreams? Oh, um, just like it, it had been taught to some of us before um, uh, to go back into dreams and try to change them, right? To step in and engage with the enemy and, and uh, try to change the dreams. And um, just recently, Yahweh told me, don't do that. <laughs> he was like, no, don't do that. 
<laughs> just okay. observe just observe it's whatever the is whatever is going to be don't step into it and try to change it so that's what i was going to say and i don't know if you were asking about that that's what i felt when i read your question do you ever feel that maybe you wake up in the middle of it and you shouldn't who me yeah just in general no no no, no. okay I think I have before, but not any time recently. Yeah, I tell people, do not wake me up. Do not wake me up. <laughs> Whatever I'm dreaming, I want that dream. <laughs> I, I I just trust him completely that even if I can only sleep for a short time, he's going to show me what I need to see. Because mm -hmm. I have six kids, I'm going to get woke up sometimes. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah that happens well, that's a Do good you, statement because you because the scripture says i see in part and i prophesy in part or mm -hmm. i see in part and i govern in part you know so being progressive we deal with layers upon layers upon layers through what he reveals in a dream or a vision at that particular time and then as time passes he'll reveal more to release you from some of those limitations and bondages and, and chains so that you'll come into your fullness yeah yeah it's a, it's yeah it's the journey the journey yeah i've been I'm seeing excited that about what he's showing about the blue fire us us around that and i'm excited i'm excited about that yeah it wasn't always a blue fire sometimes he'd allow me to pray over the person and i could feel you know quantum physics says we're light power and energy are so closely related that they're used to define each other but so i could feel that that light coming from my hands i would never really touch them but my hands would just kind of scan their body and they light up and get energized in in the vision of where that healing needed to take place like one of them, uh, a lady friend from uh, lake tahoe her son had an accident and she put out a prayer request on facebook uh, and what happened, he had a trampoline accident and I said, well, I just really love that family. I felt like the Lord wanted me to go into a, a, uh, I'll be with you in the spirit kind of moment, trans relocate into his ICU room. And I get in there and I see a white, uh, cloud like thing around his neck. So I knew his neck was broken. And so I prayed for him. I said, he's going to be okay to mom. I described the room. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Uh, and uh, just gave her a lot of hope. He's still in a wheelchair, but he's doing remarkably well. Uh, better uh, than anybody in all history with that particular uh, kind of issue has ever done. And so... Uh, it seems like it's unfortunate, but he's just an incredible young man and just really uh, making the best out of where he is, you know, so he's, he's all right. But God took me into that place and, and had me uh, uh, pray over him. And, and I said, wow, you know, just closed my eyes and focused on it. There I was. And uh, that's happened several, several times. And a lot of times there was a blue light. A lot of times there was some other situation. I don't ever want to make it a legalistic thing that it has to be a blue light coming into the room. That's yeah. happened a lot of times, but not every time. I just more of in the uh, uh, neutral position with God. Uh, the last one was the blue light. I didn't even get a chance to pray because I had this legalistic mindset, religious mindset says, I'm going into this room. And even though I'm in a vision, I'm going to pray for this person. But that wasn't what Yahweh was wanting to do in this particular situation. He just took me into the room. And then all of a sudden I saw a blue light coming in that, that totally overwhelmed the whole everybody there and, and healed the person in, in the ICU room. So it's like, it's different. I just like, I love that statement. You said, stay neutral mm -hmm. and let him lead you. Not my own thoughts the way I think this should thing happen. So that's powerful. Yeah. 
I love that. Any any um, healing or anything that I've been a part of like that, it's always different. It's always different. I just go with however uh, Yahweh or Jesus is uh, leading it. You know, there has been times like I, I posted before where I said to people with terminal cancer, Jesus just healed you or you're healed. And then, and they really were, I didn't pray for them or anything. I just said, they were said they have cancer and Jesus healed you. That happened a couple of times. Um, last night I, I was uh, praying with a girl through text. I've had a lot of miracles happen through text. Um, and she has a lot of digestive issues, a lot of trauma. And, um, and I said, well, let's go to the father. Let's go see him. Let's go in his presence. Let's go to the Rose garden. Let's go visit him. And then, you know, when we did that, I felt the, I felt the presence of heaven hit me. I was like, oh, do you feel that? I know you feel that. She said, I feel that I can feel it. And I, and I said, um, so what I saw was her body. And then I saw the light busting through the light of Yahweh busting through all of the dark parts in her body. So it was like her silhouette. And then it just started light, just started busting through in all these different places. So I said, close your eyes and just see the light of Yahweh illuminating and bursting through your whole body. And she says, Oh, I'm being healed. I'm being healed. My, my, um, digestive, my digestive tract. I feel, I can feel it. I'm being healed. And so, uh, today she, she texted me, she said, man, I know I was healed last night. And I was like, wow, that's different. I'm going to tell people to close their eyes and imagine this. It's just whatever, you know, um, how you're being led at that moment. I don't think any two ways have ever been the same in my experience. Right, right. So we want to, uh, you mentioned at the start of this thing about going ascending, praying and, and being led to the Lord. You want to go there? You have anything else you want to share? I'm not, I'm not getting sleepy or anything but but uh if you guys got more if not we we'll uh we'll do that or whatever whatever you think what's you want to you pray to no i want terry to pray, oh, <laughs> you want <me> to pray. <laughs> i want you to pray <laughs> you want me to pray you pray got that that fire on her prayers <laughs> oh okay yeah that's what yeah uh <laughs> we can you wait you got this we can pray together huh okay yeah i don't know i feel funny once everybody turns to me it's like uh, <laughs> <laughs> somebody else go first and then i'll join in i'm shy i'm so glad that it's just familiar faces here i'm gonna <laughs> right. be honest because uh that's funny uh okay Annie, Annie, pray. Yes. Okay, I'll pray. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I got voted. <laughs> I have no choice. Um, Holy Father, we just thank you um, for being so faithful. Um, we thank you so much for this time of fellowship. And we just thank you for um, your, your love of us, God. We thank you that you love us so much, that you give us revelation in our dreams. And um, we thank you, God, that we just would continue to move forward in what you have for each of us in the dream realm. Um, and we just come out of agreement with, um, as uh, Jen, Jen was saying, um, that lie that we don't dream. And so we just come out of agreement with them with the lie that we don't dream, that we don't get revelation, that we don't understand, um, that we'll lose our dreams, that we'll forget our dreams. We just come out of agreement with that. And we just receive a fresh anointing um, for revelation in our dreams. And we just thank you. Like, I just see like oil being poured down on people's heads, like this like gold thick what I see oil. Too, yeah. um, thank you, Father God. Um, we just thank you for um, a fresh anointing and, um, and just fresh jurisdiction in the dream realm. And we thank you, Holy Father, that, um, that we would be able to move in the way that you want us to in our dreams. Um, and the way that you see fit, that it would not be um, the court of self-will, but it would be the court of your will for us specifically. Yes. Um, we just thank you for being able to receive, um, as Harry was saying, out of a place of peace and rest, because I definitely have felt that. And that as we stay in peace, as we stay in rest, that things just unfold before us, God, out of your goodwill. And um, we just thank you for our closeness. We thank you, God, for our abilities to see you in a different way because you're so vast and you have so many facets. And we just thank you that as we explore the things of you, um, that we each would have specific revelation mm -hmm. of the facet of yourself that you want us to see that you have for us to get revelation of. 
And um, I just bless everyone in this meeting. And I just thank you, Holy Father, um, for your goodness. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I saw the angels. I saw two angels to every person. And they had this beautiful um, pitcher with water with water from heaven, from, from the river and, and heaven. And they were just pouring it on top of each person's head. <clears throat> just thank yes, you I that. saw that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And I, um, I'm sorry, Terry, did you, did you recently like buy a pair of sneakers? Are you looking for a pair of sneakers? <laughs> I bought a pair of sandals. Cause I just, um, I just had like a vision of you like sitting, sitting down and you put on a pair of blue tennis shoes and you like tied the laces. Like they were like cream colored laces. It was really specific. Um, yeah, I just saw very specifically, you were sitting down, you put on a pair of blue sneakers and you tied the laces. And I had a dream before of Nicole and she had these like bright white, like immaculate sneakers and, and the Holy Spirit kept zooming in on the shoes. And so there, there's definitely something there. I am a shoe guy, so oh, I, wow. can, I can go shopping <laughs> for shoes tomorrow. <laughs> Are you going to take off Ron and Terry? Is that what's going to happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are Holy Ghost Spirit of Truth shoes. Yeah, they were like a light Flames. blue, like a sky blue with like beige cream colored face. laces. I don't know if I can find them here, but they'll match the wedding dress. <laughs> Something blue. Yeah. Hey, there we go. <laughs> That's pretty good. I saw us all stepping through the veil together. I saw us all shoulder to shoulder, stepping through, parting it, going through, go, going to the other side, going to where Yahweh is. And I, I saw him speaking to us, speaking to us. And I, it was like the words that were are coming out of his mouth are just going into us. You know, he's speaking and it's coming out and it's alive. And it's going in and it's just soaking into all of us. And we're, we're, we're like a family, like Terry said, we're just all there shoulder to shoulder. And I was trying to hear, you know, like, what is he saying? What is he saying? I, mean, I would imagine it would be like about the dreaming and about, I don't know though. I don't want to, I don't want to say, because I can't, I don't know what he's saying. I don't know. Maybe you guys can hear what he's saying. I heard I am with you. He said, I go before you. The rest of it is not clear. Thank you that we're one with you. Thank you, Yahweh. with you. He said, my glory falls. Ooh. It's it like, my um, it's like, um, like, like angels, different angels are being assigned to us now. They, they look different. They have gold plates on them. Like I see gold plates on the shoulders and I see several coming, you know, to each of us in a way that it's like, okay, I'm with you now. I just heard him say, cover your head. I don't know. <laughs> I heard my glory falls again. I heard assignments. I see blueprints or see each, I see each one opening different like blueprints that like look, um, they look like literal like blueprints of like, you know, like houses, you know, when you, when you see things drawn out or mapped out. And so they're, op they're opening those and they're showing them to us. Everyone has a different, it's different. I heard assignments. So we're like together, but we're individual. Right, so we're we're together, shoulder to shoulder, but, um, but you know, there's there's two or three in front of us, and they're they're with us, and they're opening up and showing something new, something new. I heard journeys before you. Ooh. The rest of it is not clear. I see each 
uh, person um, be, becoming as they're engaging, as we're engaging with these angels and, and talking about these blueprints, there is, I see each person rising up with a new joy, with a new joy, the fresh joy and excitement. everyone here i keep hearing my glory my glory my glory on repeat well, we thank you for your glory we thank you that we can come we thank you that we can come into your presence we love you yahweh yahweh we love you we are so glad to be in your presence thank you for what you're giving thank you for what you're showing thank you for what we're doing in alignment with you we look forward to carrying out whatever's on these blueprints, whatever's on our scroll, whatever it is that you have for us to do. We give you all the glory, the praise, and the honor. We love you, Father. Thank you for the waters from heaven that's clearing each person now. Thank you for the new help that you're sending us. I pray that everyone's dreams if they're blocked or if there's anything blocking them that they would just be totally unlocked, that you will remember them, you'll remember your dreams. Holy Spirit, thank you for revelation. That's just a nice, nice place to be. Hard to step I heard him say, I love you. Mm -hmm. He said, I love my children. Hmm. He said he creates masterpieces. Ooh. It's like we're stepping out and coming back with this piece of heaven with us. Yes. It's just, it's just a we're just coming back down with something that we that he's given us from there something new and something different he's so good i heard miracles i heard plethora of miracles Ooh. unusual miracles oh oh we see that. Amen. We receive that. Oh. Oh. I heard hold out your hand. Oh, oh. I heard my beautiful children. He said, all masterpieces. He said, his love falls. It goes before us. His love holds us together. Thank you for the metamorphosis and transformation. Yes. That we're transforming. Yes. That we have your DNA, Yahweh. That we're leaving our old natural DNA. Mm -hmm. That we have your DNA. The DNA is being restored. I just see a bunch of, um, I, I don't know how to describe it, a bunch of uh, shifting and I want to say almost like whirlwinds around us. Oh. oh, I feel like electric. Oh. It's almost like we're, oh, this is going to sound weird. Um, like we're all individual storms coming through, but it's, hmm, it's almost like when, when you say about the earth, when I move, it's earthquake rumble. It's like a storm. So it's like we're like tornadoes almost, but it's so heavenly. Like the, I wish I could describe it better. <laughs> I, can, I can take a stab at that one. Uh, okay. 
a lot of, a lot of times when we get together, people see tornadoes. Or oh, hurricanes. really? And very, very common. In, in oh, wow. History. And what that generally has meant is that if you look at Ezekiel 1, it's the mobile chariot. It's the mobile throne that Ezekiel was taken up in. He was taken up in a whirlwind. Oh, wow. And so that describes the wheels within the wheels. And it's actually a Merkaba, which is a supernatural transportational device or vehicle that you, takes us from one place to another. Wow. Those those happen quite often in in the meetings and people. Okay, I never heard that before. I felt silly saying that. I did. <laughs> That's so cool. Uh, <laughs> so he's taking us from one place to another place supernaturally. Do you know I almost picked a background of a storm with clouds and lightning coming down? And yeah. you know what I thought whenever I saw? I said, "No, nah, it might be a little busy or a little too dark." When I saw it, I thought of uh, Terry's Jericho song. It's like an earthquake rumble. <laughs> I love That's that. That's Terry's song. song. That's Terry's that song. Statement. When I move, it's an earthquake rumble. Amen. It's, yeah. That's who we are. We don't have to say anything. It just happens. The earthquake, all creation is groaning for the manifest sons to show up on the scene because they know that we'll deliver them from the bondage of corruption. So the earth rumbles, the skies rumble, and the birds and, and the fish of the sea and the mountains and the trees and <laughs> every living creature rumbles because we show up. Yeah. We just got to get a picture of who we are when I move. I move, live and move and have my being in him. So it's a union. And it's a thing that's like it, the creation can't resist but rumble when you show up. I thought Terry was going to start rapping there. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got a rhythm going. Was that's like, how you know Terry singing it. I was like, come on. <laughs> Sing it. How's it go? <laughs> uh, I was feeling electricity go through my body. Yeah, wow, that's, good. that's cool. That's good. Very nice. Yeah, Father, please show us. Please reveal to us any blockages or hindrances that we need to go to the courts about. Mm -hmm. I just saying it because I see it already happening. Mm -hmm. I just see. I see into the week. I see into everyone's different experiences here and growth I can already see the hmm, hard to put into words gifting yeah uh -huh. yeah. yeah it's so yeah. cool how a group will a part of the same thing but with everyone it's different you know we're all different yet the same it was a pleasure um going to heaven with you all tonight <laughs> absolutely thank you so much for taking the time to to do this and uh one of my favorites so much fun i love dreams and and uh you know it's just it's just part of our life as a as a son and uh if you're offended by that term <laughs> it's not a gender issue <laughs> it's a governmental legislative and judicial uh place of authority uh, sonship and so uh uh enjoy 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 thank you jennifer so much thank you nicole thank you everybody for showing up tonight it's it's fun 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 stuff and what i've been saying for a couple of weeks now expect change expect things to happen just don't sit back and well that was a good meeting just step into the new you step into the a greater realm of dreaming and visions and encounters and experiences that you never had before because everything is accelerated right now and we can begin to experience that rather than wait and contend and tarry and press in waiting for something to happen you're the happening once you step in it happens amen you are the happening i like that one you heard yeah, i heard him that i will bless you and then he said i will bless them all and then he said tell them uh -huh. right yeah i receive it yeah me too and you know terry i wanted to say something you know since i've been connected with you for i don't know how long now but um 
things have changed in my in my life in it, to bring me up higher okay and, and I don't really have anything to pinpoint or tangible evidence of it that I can make an example but it's just happening okay it's just happening and it's like and I equate it to this to setting under um you know and to learn and to hear and to listen and to glean and my spirit receives it also my spirit is becoming you know much more stronger much more powerful and it's overriding the flesh i wish it would override the flesh way more than it does but it is in some ways right but and my soul okay my soul and our spirit heal, heals our soul but what i'm just saying that because of the download and because of the impartation and because of the revelation things are changing in my life and and even though circumstances are absolutely beyond my um liking or um whatever it's really bad but but the spirit is is you know it, it is so so this is like this is there's fruit here okay that's the easiest way to say it there's fruit tangible evidence of fruit somehow and i don't know how to describe it but it's there well awesome thank you hallelujah yay god come on yeah. <laughs> that's a great testimony yes <laughs> i love it thank you pamela that's so good. Any closing uh, remarks, statements, anything, Jennifer, Nicole, anything else before we go? Just the well, dream life is the best life. It is. Dream I, on. I knew she was waiting the whole time to say dream that. Dream on. <laughs> she was waiting for her moment. The dream life. I just got to make my meme now. You got to help me make a meme, Nicole. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, need, I need it for a cover photo. <laughs> well, you can now officially say I'm living the dream life. Oh, yes. That's good. That's good. Hashtag that. Terry's <laughs> got that graphic design for that meme. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I'll message you for that, Terry. Terry could okay. do some trade, some trade with a brother, with your brother. Right. <laughs> yeah. I've got an IT guy for you. <laughs> All right. Yeah. That'd be good. <laughs> right. We well, love you guys. Thank you so much. And we'll see you Sunday night. Thank you very right. much. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you everybody. Have a great Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everybody. <laughs> Good night. Good night.